Next up, Tim Hart, who's going to talk about time lens. Watch this guy. I, I think he might be the first one to allow us to hear the gong. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> Okay, so it looked like the first thing, so Tim Hart, Director of um, Public Engagement at Museum Victoria. The two people who developed this project have both left the museum since um, it was done. So I'm doing this with some knowledge of what's going on, so I'll see how I go. So um, Melbourne Museum uh, is where this project is run. Um, quick stats about Museum Victoria. Um, large museum organisation, we run three museums, lots of people, a very big number of education visitors. Um, pretty solid online stats and lots of subscribers to various social media channels. Um, but I guess the point about this project, that's the various uh, museums and buildings we operate, um, is that it's actually an in-museum experience. Um, Ellie's just given a great presentation on all the things we're sort of doing outside, but this is the first time we've done something specifically inside. So um, if people have seen me speak before, I always put these few slides up. Content is critical for us at the moment. Um, everyone knows that, I think, in this room. Um, online, on-site, off-site and out of museum. And we have this nice little slide that we show sort of linking up how the museum works internally, uh, moving information and resources across. And we run a networked model that supports those sort of outcomes and works reasonably well. Um, apps across the board. So Time Lens um, is a, I'm going to show a video in a minute, um, intergenerational sort of learning tool and it's designed to get families to work together in the gallery to discover things and actually spend more time and look more closely at what they're doing. Fairly simple objectives um, and it really does seem to be working very well. So I guess it's, it's doing something quite discreet, it's very controlled, there's not all that many objects. Um, 15 objects in themes and takes you to all of the various galleries in the building. Um, you get badges, which is cool, and if you get it all right, you go to the shop to redeem your badges and you actually get a physical thing to take away. Um, so it's aimed at um, five to ten-year-olds and family groups. Um, and we've had great take-up so far. Very aligned with our strategic directions, deepening connections and digital transformation. And it's very complementary to what we're doing within the, within the museums. And I think based on this success, we'll be doing it at other museums as well. Um, Game-based learning, it's our sort of first foray into that. Um, Linda was talking about that this morning. Um, so yeah, early years learning framework we've developed. And we're about to develop two of our major children's galleries at two of the museums. Uh, and that'll be a three or four million dollar project over the next three years. So this is sort of a foot in the water to get us up to speed on where we need to be going. Some shots. Um, externally funded project. Uh, we received a grant of $30,000 to do this project. Um, all developed in-house. Um, programming, design, execution, planning groups. All the people are up there. You'll be able to see these slides later. So launched uh, in July this year. And we've had about 2,500 downloads since we did that, which is fantastic. Um, and there's a later slide that shows how we're actually doing that. Um, we promote it on all of our collateral now, so you can actually find on our brochures, guides and various printed material and some of our sort of in-cinema advertising that these things are available. I forgot to play the video, Nancy. Okay, so development. Um, a network project across a lot of departments, that's education and community programs, digital and emerging technology, uh, Museum Victoria Studios, which does sort of audio-visual work, and collections research exhibitions. Um, our normal sort of governance process, um, a lot of the testing and evaluation before we did it, as we did it. Um, Ellie sort of famously said halfway through development that it was crap and it needed to be completely reworked, which was great, and it's a much better thing as a result of that intervention from her. <laughs> um, it's just won an award in Australia, an e-learning award, um, which is terrific and very unusual to win an e-learning award for this type of um, project in a museum, so we're really pleased about that. I've got a piece of glassware on my desk. Um, so, who it's targeted at? Inspirers, early adapters and duty bound. We've got a segmented sort of way we look at our audiences. Is that four minutes, Nancy? Is that right? Great. Um, so, framed around family-based learning uh, and we've got some great sort of things, uh, sort of evaluation that we've done on this now. We used our members as the target group to do that evaluation. Um, the rollout. So, why we're doing it, reputation, innovating, game-based learning, uh, maintaining some leadership around programming and engagement, 
we sort of believe that audiences expect us to be doing this sort of thing. Um, and Paula Bray at the Powerhouse has a great expression. It's called deviced up. So people arrive now with their devices and this at least gives them something they can do with them that we're controlling. Roll out. We have quite a presence during school holidays. There's a lot of signage. We have a special desk set up. There are some iPads there where it can be demoed to people. Uh, and we have Wi-Fi at all our museums for free so people can download them. And I've got just a couple of little movies. In fact, I'm going to step back and play the introductory movie. I think I've got time. The Time Lens. We'll never know how it was invented. I like to think it went a little bit like this. A lonely curator sat in the bowels of the museum, staring at an old and unusual gizmo. Her research had reached a dead end. What was this thing? What had it been used for? Who built it? Why can't you just tell me? She shouted at it. An idea formed. If she could invent a machine that could look through time and let her talk to gizmos or critters or even people for that matter, then she would have all her answers. So invent it she did. She tinkered for weeks in a darkened room, using spare parts that she borrowed from the museum. And finally, the first time lens was born. Now she could hear an object's story told in its own words. Over the years, she refined her invention. She walloped and whacked and sawed and hacked and tweaked and twiddled and turned and niggled until she could hold it in her hands, just as you're holding it in your hands right now. Oh, how do I get back to it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is our app page on our Museum Victoria website, and it's the first one there. And I'm going to show one more little movie. I know. So this is Farlap, which is sort of a very iconic object we have. So it's a sort of time machine metaphor. Gotta race, gotta race, gotta run, gotta run. Hey, I'm Farlap. You might not have heard of me, but remember the name, because I'm gonna be huge. They call me Big Red. I've won almost every single race I've run. Next week, my trainer Harry is sending me to America to run in the Agua Caliente Handicap, the richest race in the world. If I win there, we get $50,000, and everyone will know that I'm the greatest racehorse ever. Gotta run, gotta run. Gotta run. Oh, here comes Tommy Woodcock. He's my best friend. He's coming to America too. I've gotta run. 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 Great, thank you.